Hi there and welcome to the first of my weekly wraps, which will, I believe, replace my monthly wraps. So after making 100 videos for the channel, why change now? Why tinker with a winning formula? Well, the fact is this. The temporal unit around which my reading life revolves has changed and is now very much the week for two reasons. Firstly, of course, professors assign weekly readings as part of my PhD studies. But secondly, I'm also making weekly trips to the library. So it makes sense that I now make weekly videos to keep you abreast of my activities. And I imagine there will be three components to these videos. I will share my reading for pleasure, my reading for school and my latest borrowings. So without further ado, let's begin with this week's reading for pleasure. I read two novels this week, both of them by Edith Nesbitt, Five Children and It from 1902 and The Enchanted Castle from 1907, brought together in this nicely produced Barnes & Noble edition, which is available for free online. Link in the description below. Five Children and It was rather forgettable and there were far too many interventions from the narrator, digressions that I didn't find particularly amusing and which grew more and more wearisome as the novel wound on. The Enchanted Castle, however, was a different story, a supremely imaginative piece of writing, which I'll be making a full review of in due course. I've almost finished a third novel, Kobo Abe's The Boxman. It's been a real grind and around 90 pages or so, I had to hold up my hands and admit I had absolutely no clue what was going on. And just at that point, there was a development in the story, which further confused me, calling into question, as it did, pretty much everything that had gone on up to that point. Not his strongest work, and I doubt I'll be reviewing it. All right, my reading for school. For the readings in British and American literary history class, we made a start on Shakespeare's The Winter's Tale, and we also read a chapter of a book by Mary Beth Rose, where she considers the Winter's Tale as an early modern version of the Griselda story and compares it with three versions produced in the Middle Ages by Petrarch, Chaucer and Boccaccio, where indeed it forms the final tale of his Decameron. And if you're not familiar with the Griselda story, I'll give you a very brief summary. The tale centres on an Italian nobleman who, pressured by his subjects to marry, agrees to do so on the condition that they do not challenge his choice of bride. He duly selects a peasant girl, Griselda, and makes her swear absolute obedience to him should they wed. She agrees and then begins the test of her obedience. The tyrannical husband takes away their children, a son and a daughter, after their birth and supposedly has them put to death. He then kicks Griselda out of the house only to summon her to his side some 16 years or so later to act as bridesmaid at his wedding to a younger woman who turns out to be the daughter who was not put to death after all, neither was the son and the family now reunited live happily ever after. It's a preposterous tale, but one which has exerted a fascination over artists, scholars and audiences for centuries. You can check it out if you wish link to Picasso's version in the description below. And now for my class on nihilism. The reading for this class came from this rather hefty course packet and comprised the first four chapters of a book on nihilism, simply titled Nihilism by Nolan Gertz. It had a rather for dummies quality about it and the author insisted on continually underscoring their liberal credentials, which I found extremely tiresome. Oh well, you can't win them all. Now let's have the final section of this video, my borrowings from the library this week, and then it will be time to bid you farewell. Just four books to share with you this week, the first two of which are by Thomas Bernhard. So here we have The Loser, which I'll need for my April video on his fiction. I've read this many times. It's absolutely wonderful. And then we have one of his funniest fictions. Old Masters with its cover of White Bearded Man by Tintoretto, which plays a central part in the story. And then on the same shelf, I picked out these two books that I haven't read before. The Rings of Saturn by W.G. 
Sebao? I suppose you pronounce it something like that in German. Let me know if that's incorrect. And lastly, Alone in Berlin by Hans Verlada. I've read the first chapter of this, and it's one of those rare books where you immediately know you're in the presence of great literature. I can't wait to read further. So there you have it. That was my reading week. How was yours? Please let me know in the comments below. Equally, if you have any thoughts on the works I've shared, I'd love to hear them. But now, as promised, I must bid you farewell. Be safe, be strong, and I shall see you anon. Nanu nanu.